As we reach the halfway point in Series 2 of Search for Hurt, let's take a look back at where we've come from. Series 1 star Matt Murphy achieved his goal of finding the hurt and decided it was high time to share it around. So he formed Team Search for Hurt and sent out an open invitation for athletes around Australia to apply. I'd like to share with you guys my journey of my search for hurt. The final 12 athletes were invited to our first ever hurt camp, a brutal suffer fest designed by our favourite sadist to push our contenders to their limits and beyond. So Matt could see who had the physical and mental qualities needed to join his team. 23-year-old Andrew Papadopoulos and 29-year-old Leah Richardson ultimately won the coveted spots and so began their experience of a lifetime. Bring it on, 2014, the year of hurt, this is going to be great. They'd be drip fed their events one at a time with just 30 days to prepare for each. Matt arranges a professional mentor who's a past or present legend in the required discipline. The mentor provides their basic training. Then Matt outlines a customized 30 day program to best prepare them for the challenge ahead. Their first challenge was the bridge to beach paddleboard race where Leah really struggled to find her rhythm and as a result found the event testing and her result disappointing while Pap was a lot more at ease on the water and managed to achieve his goal time. Next, they moved from the water to the bush for a 24-hour mountain bike event called the Mont. Here the roles were reversed and Pap was well and truly out of his comfort zone. Ultimately, the event was postponed due to rain and while they headed out to make the most of being there, both agreed that they dodged a big bullet as neither felt adequately prepared for a punishing race of that magnitude. Matt upped the stakes on their next event with a challenge that takes no prisoners. The North Face 100, a 100 kilometer ultra marathon through the unforgiving Blue Mountains. Leah's extensive background in endurance events gave her the natural advantage and she pushed through to finish a couple of hours ahead of Pat. The big guy really found the hurt in this event, but with limited training, he was still impressive, all by gritting his teeth, overcoming the pain, and ultimately making it to the finish. Pap and Leah have already pushed themselves well beyond their perceived limits, and we're only halfway through their search for her journey. So, where to next? It's only been 10 hours since the team finished the North Face 100 kilometre run and Matt brings their very sore bodies in for a little debrief and then to reveal their next surprise event. I, I have heard rumours from the camera crew that it was, to say the least, a very uh, a baptism of fitness you could say. <laughs> Huge effort, unbelievable. Um, sum it up for me first Pat, hit me. Man, that was my first running event ever. So I've never ran more than 21Ks until I started training for it. And didn't, it didn't matter how much training I did for it, I wasn't like prepared really for the 100Ks. I am shattered, absolutely shattered. I can't feel my legs. I have to lift my legs up off the seat to stand up, man. I need assistance to walk. It just killed me, absolutely killed me. So how, how deep did you have to dig? I definitely got to that dark dark space in my head. I almost collapsed, like I almost passed out near the end. It was just every leg, of, every leg was just tough, <laughs> tough, tough. It was definitely what I was looking for, man. I've seen a little bit of footage because it's only about 10 hours ago that you finished and yeah, there was some dark places there for you. And what about you, Leah? It was, it was really hard. Yeah, the later it gets, as soon as the darkness hits, it's, it's hard out there. You're struggling to see, you I just kept falling over. <laughs> I mean, All the time. you've got your headlamps on, but it gets really hard out there. You're fatigued, it's dark, it's, it's just really hard. It's good, I love it. 
What about you? How deep did you have to dig? Yeah, towards the end, it was um, every step was really hurting. Do you want the good news or do you want the bad news? Good I news. <laughs> I don't think it could be good news right now. It's not. <laughs> Your next task is GeoQuest, which is a 48 hour endurance challenge. What? Oh. what? <laughs> <laughs> Mountain Designs GeoQuest, Australia's premier adventure race, which involves 48 hours of non-stop endurance racing in the major disciplines of trekking, mountain biking, kayaking and navigation. It's the ultimate test of your physical and mental limits. This is certainly not your average weekend. So North Face was hard. It was the most hardest thing I've done so far. Then Matt drops the bomb of us, a 48 hour adventure race. Now I've got all these ideas running through my head. I'm like, I just ran for 17 and a half hours. My body's broken. How am I meant to operate for 48 hours? So we're going down to see a gentleman called Jared Kohler, who's one of the best adventure racers in Australia. And he's gonna teach you guys how to paddle and to navigate. We don't want two days turning into three or four because you get lost out there. <laughs> All right? So, it's straight on a plane and off to Melbourne. We had to make our way down to Melbourne to see our next mentor, Jared. It's safe to say that I was in excruciating pain and we're on a plane in a little tight, confined spot. There's no way I could sit there static for a couple of hours. I had to get up and do some lunges and stretch throughout down the aisles. I was getting some odd looks, but I didn't care, I had to move. Now that they're off the plane, the team are about to get hit with their biggest challenge straight away, getting out of the airport. <laughs> my feet feel like they're the size of watermelons and on fire. My ankle is about to blow up. My knee just doesn't like me at all. We're just throwing them in the deep end to get ready for GeoQuest. You have to have the most amount of time to prepare for these events. It's time for Leah and Pat to meet their mentor, Jared Kolar. So let's get a little insight into who he is. But we heard you did the uh, GeoQuest last year. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I raced uh, with Team MacPack last year yeah. and we won, which was pretty cool. And, uh, First place, wow. Yeah, wow. yeah. And also did the North Face 50 last year. So I kind of know how your legs are feeling. <laughs> yeah. The name Jared Kolar is synonymous with Australian adventure sports, with an impressive resume of race wins across numerous adventure pursuit disciplines, including multi-sport, paddling, mountain biking, trail running, and adventure racing. Jared personifies what adventure sport is all about. Tough, eclectic, fun-loving, and a little bit wild. And if you can kind of have that really good teamwork, um, you know, and also really good navigation and good strategy, then you're going to, you know, get the best result that you guys yeah. can. If there's anyone that we'd want to send Andrew and Leah to learn about adventure racing, it's this guy. Adventure sports is a connecting element for me to my body, my friends, my family, my job the environment that I live in and the flora and fauna that you know lives in that environment. If I get out there and, and have an adventure, then I feel like I'm, I'm more connected to all those aspects of my life. He spent a lot of time not only in Australia racing, but doing some of the biggest adventure races around the world. And the beauty of that is that he's experienced all the little things that can go wrong. And with Andrew and Leah, I dare say a lot of those little things will go wrong. So yeah, we'll, we'll get stuck into it. Jazz just prepping our kayak, ready to go out in the ocean. And um, he told me that if you're top heavy, it's actually a disadvantage when you think it would be. If you'd be using all your upper, upper body muscle groups, but he said if you're top heavy, you sway a lot more, and that way you're gonna probably fall in. So you know, I think I'd be capsizing a lot. 
All right, so basically this is called your paddling position. It's pretty much 80% technique, you know. The whole stroke is, it's not, doesn't matter how big and strong you are, that's how efficient and effective your technique is. The guys are getting set to learn paddling technique. In the meantime, we're going to head over to Matt, who has some unfinished business with our North Face 100 mentor, Brendan Davies. I'm a man of my word, and Brendan Davies and I made a bet about two weeks ago on Pap and Leah at the North Face. And Who's your bet to be first across the line if either of them are going to finish? Oh, if I had to pick someone, I reckon Leah's a bit of a stayer. Uh... I've actually had to come down here to St Ives Showground to pay my dues because I lost. Hello, mate. Hey, Matt. Oh, God, what do you got in store for me? Well, mate, this is my little uh, secret training weapon that I've been known to use time to time. In, uh, but uh, today I'm just here to sit back and, yeah. and have a bit of a read of... Uh, of my search for hurt mag while you uh, pull me around for a few uh, few reps of the oval. I okay, all right, yeah. all right. So let's uh, show me, yeah, show me what I got to do. Strap you up. Yeah, strap right. me up. Just around your hips, okay. mate. <laughs> and how long am I on this for? Well, I'd like you to pick the pace up a bit, if possible. Faster! I'm trying. Okay, we'll leave Matt to it for now, and we'll check up on him later. With the stroke, um, you got four key areas. The first one is the catch, so I'll guide you through this. Um, the catch is as close to the boat as possible and as far forward as possible, but you don't want to lean forward with your upper body. So your, your back always stays up nice and straight. Okay, when you've caught the water, that then you, you enter what's called the drive phase. So the drive, if you're paddling with your left hand, it's your left heel that drives forward and you swivel forward with your right hip and you rotate around the stroke, okay? And see how the blade is nice and vertical in the water? What you need to remember is that you're paddling for so long in GeoQuest that if you don't have the right technique, you're gonna suffer pretty bad. You're gonna fatigue really fast. Certain muscle groups are gonna get very, very tired and possibly cramp. And not only that, you're gonna let the whole team down because you're either having to stop completely or your stroke rate's gonna to have to drop and therefore the team's gonna go slower. You know, your whole core, all your lats are involved in the stroke. Okay, so your biceps and your triceps and your forearms are hardly doing anything. It's all in the core. Jared finishes up on some basics, including how to steer. And now it's time to put all the beach work into action. Freezing down here in Melbourne today, and I'm just trying to sit in without falling over and making a fool of myself and getting drenched. So that's step one completed. Finesse, finesse, that muscle. Woo! It's a lot lovelier! Don't fall! So we were working on our open sea kayaking with our mentor, Jared, and he put a little race between Leah and I to get around these buoys that were out in the ocean. He goes, start from the, start from the beach, work your way around and paddle back. Head out and around the two yellow markers. So she's got good torso rotation there. Now if we look at Pat, you know, there's hardly any torso rotation there and he's just re relying on like, just all his strength, basically. She's not here in this interview. She, you'll see on the film she came first, but you know, I had to let her win at something, you know. Not really, no, she had actually a lot better technique than me. I always focusing more on just brute strength. Um, but with kayaking, as you can see, that it really comes down to technique. So, well done, Leah. Your mind is so much more powerful than your body, you know. So if your mind wants to do something, it can basically achieve anything, uh, even if your body says no. 
but how about we go up and we'll grab the double and we can give you guys a shot on, on a double. What you need to remember is that you're paddling for so long in GeoQuest that if you don't have the right technique, you're going to suffer pretty bad. Oh, I'm just trying to You're doing it on purpose. I'm doing it on purpose. Oh, I'm shadowing you. Go. Okay, let's go right. Yeah. You're going to fatigue really fast. Certain muscle groups are going to get very, very tired and possibly cramp. But there's a lot of talking, so obviously... Oh, that's not good teamwork happening there. And not only that, you're going to let the whole team down because you're either having to stop completely or your stroke rate's going to have to drop and therefore the team's going to go slower. You can see now they're having moments of really good paddling where they're shadowing one another and then when their boat dips or leans to one side and when they get out of time, the, the speed of the boat slows right up. Considering this is their first paddle, they're doing amazingly well. They're paddling a V10 double, which is uh, an advanced ski. Pat, that was the best I've seen you paddle all day. You've slowed your stroke rate down and shadowing in the front, and everything was engaged at the right time. A lot more stable and efficient. Yeah. So I think that's where it comes down to is conserving energy and being as efficient as possible with each stroke. Yeah. And before I was just muscling it out and burning everything out real quick. Yeah, no, it's good. Let's see how Matt is faring after losing that bet. Matt's starting to find the going pretty tough and tries to get his own back on Brandon. You shouldn't have done that, Matt. <laughs> Brandon will only hit back harder. <laughs> The GeoQuest involves four different, I guess, events in one. First of all, we've got running, which they've done the North Face. Then they've got mountain bike riding, which they've done the Mont. Then they've got paddling, which is a steep learning curve. So that's one to get their heads around. But I think the hardest one here is the navigation aspect. The best thing with navigation is trial and error because when you make a mistake, you're never going to do the same. Well, hopefully, you don't repeat that. This is similar to the maps that you'll get during GeoQuest. I've already chucked some checkpoints out um, in Westgate Park, so we're going to go and try and find those checkpoints. Probably about, it's only about a five or six K run. Does that sound good? Well, I don't know, my legs are pretty shot. Do we have to run this? Or? Well, a search for hurt, isn't it? Like, yes. you know, you did the North Face <laughs> yesterday, mate. Yeah. So you've had 24 hours to recover from that. So yeah, just, just I, don't, I, I don't hear everyone complaining. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay, let's do it. I'll sprint. All right, <laughs> let's go. This top bit here is for taking bearings. So north, you got to line up north in the shed. And then, you know, you can go on a, on a bearing on the map. You've got north reference points here. So it's just to orientate the map. That's right. Fair uh, okay, so if that's north, then you line up north with north on the map. <laughs> okay. If you send the whole team in the wrong direction and you're tired and you go two kilometres one way the wrong way and then two kilometres back, that's potentially an hour that you've made your team suffer. And when you're tired, you don't deal with someone making the wrong decision very well. I've never used this. <laughs> yeah, never so used a there's uh, also some some interesting facial expressions going on here. So mm -hmm. it should be should be good fun when we get out there. Time's running out. The team have to catch a flight back home soon, and so have a chance to do this quick orienteering test. I did get to the point of the railway line yep. and the track. Yep. And I think I must have turned too early to come around this. That was pretty good. Um, you know, getting the three checkpoints and making it making it back here. Get them all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phew. In case you missed it, the big fella displays the correct running technique. 
when you're too sore to run, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phew. All I want to do is just wrap around here and go straight, kind of thing, under this bridge and yeah, 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 around yeah. now. You know, at that stage, you're heading west. Yeah. Which is up. like the wrong direction. So all you need to do is look at the compass, and the compass never lies. That's right. That's all right. I, I, I won't learn, like I took into consideration, you said you'd rather go twice as slow in the right direction than twice as fast in the wrong direction, which is exactly what I learned. Yeah, today. yeah. Good luck. All right. <laughs> Hopefully it's only, you know, <laughs> 48 hours of hurt, yeah. not oh, 60. Not no, no. <laughs> <laughs>